In this video, we'll look at four categories of laptops that are capable of running architectural software. Then we'll touch on specific product recommendations in each of those categories. So my goal with this video is to help you to pick the laptop category first before then narrowing down to a specific product. Because when it comes to laptops or any types of other electronic devices, the specific models change all the time but the categories remain more or less the same throughout the years. My hope is that after watching this video, you'll become more confident in picking the laptop that is capable of running architectural software and is within your budget. Hi guys, my name is Alex, I'm an architect in UK and today we'll look at my laptop picks for architectural work in the following four categories. Gaming, affordable, workstation and alternative. So before jumping into these four categories, let's first of all look at the general overarching criteria for picking any laptop for architectural work. Now, principle number one is to buy as much laptop as you can afford. A fast laptop doesn't guarantee that you're going to become a good designer, but a bad laptop will definitely slow you down and will distract you from creating great designs. So the principle number two is the function over the form. Now, inevitably you're going to get to a stage in your university work where you might have to pull all-nighters or you might have to work really hard towards the deadline and in those cases you want a machine that's going to be reliable that's not going to crash or corrupt your files and so for every dollar or every pound that you spend on a laptop all that money should ideally go into the power of the computer um, and you should really avoid fancy things like flip screen um, a touch screen I would even go as far as to say that the 4k screen the battery life are not really that important and even the storage capacity because you can always connect to a second screen you can always print out your presentation you can plug in your laptop to a power source and you can buy an external hard drive but the power of the laptop how quick it is and how much programs you can run at the same time is far more critical when you're trying to get your project over the line so the principle number three is the minimum specifications that I think each architectural laptop should have to run most of the architectural software available. First of all, 16 gigabytes of RAM, at least, um, it should have an i7 Intel processor or the equivalent AMD Ryzen 7 processor. And AMDs are actually cheaper than Intel and their performance is pretty much the same. I actually made another video on this subject explaining what these different specifications mean. So you can check that out if you like. Um, then in terms of the screen size, 15 inch offers the optimum size of the monitor where you can actually see your work quite well without the need uh, for, to go for the external monitor. Anything smaller than that I find is really counterproductive because you can't see as much. Go for the solid state drive, 500 gigabytes, if, again, if you can afford that. Less if you can't. If you go with less, then uh, put some money aside for the external hard drive as well. Things like 4K display, battery life, touch sensitive screen, and even weight of the laptop, I wouldn't worry about those things too much because they're not critical for the type of work that you'll be doing as the other specification components. So focus on the minimum requirements first before adding extra features. Okay, so now let's jump into the specific categories. The first one is the workstation class laptops. Now these are the types of laptops that have been designed specifically to run resource intensive operations and programs. They are reliable, versatile and fast. Basically exactly what every architecture student or professional needs from a laptop. The internal components for the workstation class laptops are typically picked so that they can run several applications at the same time without the risk of crashing. And in fact, most of the architectural practices at least the big ones, tend to use workstation class computers in general to do their work. Because typically these types of laptops have very good warranty deals and they can also last for a very long time before developing any problems. The downside with workstation class laptops is that they tend to be quite expensive and they also can be designed to be quite bland. They're not particularly flashy and I think that's the reason why a lot of students might not have them in the universities. Because architectural students for some reason are not the type of people that these types of laptops are advertised to. So my pick for this category is Dell Precision Laptop, which is well-made, elegant, and durable machine. And Dell itself as a brand is quite well-known across the architectural industry. It serves many practices, many offices around. 
So it's definitely a brand that has been around for a while and that has served the architectural industry successfully for many years. The baseline Dell Precision laptops are actually quite affordable at 16 gigabytes of RAM and an i7 processor. But as soon as you start to bump the spec up a little bit, the price goes up significantly. So to conclude, the workstation class laptops are ideal if you're looking for something that's reliable, durable, and that has great multitasking capabilities. The downside, unfortunately, is the cost. The workstation class laptops tend to be the most expensive types of laptops there are. This leads me to the next category, which is the gaming class of laptops. Now, gaming types of laptops are quite similar in many ways to the workstation class laptops in that they also tend to be built really well. The internal components that go in into these laptops are usually high specification, much higher than the ordinary home or business types of laptops. However, unlike the workstation class of laptops, you have to be extremely picky about what kind of brands you go with because the build quality can actually actually vary a lot if you go for the cheaper types of laptops or less reputable brands. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to gaming laptops is that they usually are designed to do one thing really well and that is to run games. And this basically means that the multitasking is not what these laptops are specifically designed for. Now you still will be able to run things like Photoshop and SketchUp and Revit at the same time probably, but the rate of crashes and errors is going to be higher than compared to the workstation class of laptops just because the internal hardware is not optimized to deal with the workload the same way as the workstation laptops. But I think as long as you keep the number of opened applications on your computer to a reasonable number and you make sure to save the work regularly and restart the computer every so often, I think you'll be generally fine with these computers. In fact, as a side note, make sure you get some kind of cloud storage solution for your computer like Google Drive or Dropbox with about one to two terabytes of the storage capability at least. So that you can constantly back up your data from your computer in case it gets lost or stolen or damaged. You can always access that work later on. So for this gaming laptop category, I actually have two picks. One is the Razer Blade laptop, which is also known as the MacBook of the gaming world because of its sleek design and resemblance to the older generation MacBooks Pro. Again, these types of laptops are powerful, well-made, and they're generally good reviews across the internet about their quality, durability, and longevity as well. The second pick I have is the Alienware laptops. And these laptops are actually owned by Dell, and again, as mentioned, Dell is quite a reputable brand. They produce good quality laptops. And when it comes to Alienware, these types of laptops can actually be quite affordable, especially if you go with the AMD processor units and the dedicated video cards. Although with Alienware, their stealth, jet-like, aesthetical appearance might not be everybody's cup of tea. So as a conclusion, buy gaming class laptops. If you find workstation class laptops unaffordable, the small downside of this is that some of them will have the appearance of the gaming laptop and so that might not be everybody's preference. All right, the next category is the affordable category. Now, when I was in the university, I didn't have a workstation or a gaming laptop. In fact, I had the very cheap Lenovo laptop, which I think I bought just under 600 pounds at the time. And so even though it was quite cheap laptop, it lasted me throughout my university and I still have it and it still works well. I mean, it's not as fast as it used to be, but it just proves the point that you can pick affordable computer that will last you. You don't have to have the super expensive laptop in order to have a good machine. So the affordable class of laptops is not really a category. I kind of just made it up for the purposes of this video. And in this category, I include the lower end of the gaming laptops, the work class laptops, and also creators laptops. Now, there's a couple of ways I would go about looking for the affordable laptop. I would first of all pick reliable brand and my top recommendations would be Dell, Lenovo, Asus and MSI as the top picks. I would then go on to each of these manufacturers websites. I would go to the laptops list. I would pick all and then I would sort by the minimum hardware requirement, minimum specifications that we covered in the first part of this video. And then I would compare the prices against different options that they have available to see which ones I like most 
cost and which ones are more affordable for me. And so I would do that for each of these brands. And then eventually after I set my eyes on a couple of the models available, I would go on to other retail sites like Amazon. And if you live in the UK, you can go to sites like PC World or any other, again, reputable seller in your own country and look for these exact models. Sometimes what you'll find is that they've been discounted or there's a newer version of the same product and the older version can be bought for much cheaper price. So it's definitely worthwhile checking these areas. And then lastly, I would say, and this would be only like a last resort situation, but you can also buy what's called refurbished laptops. These are the types of laptops that have been damaged in some way, or they have some kind of flaws in the, the original components and they had to be replaced. And typically these laptops, because they had to be repaired at some point, they're still new, but their price would be lower than compared to the completely new uh, laptop just from the factory. And so be careful where you buy them. I think if you buy them from the manufacturer's website, it's, a, it's the best place to buy them from. And just make sure that the warranty that they offer is quite good because oftentimes these laptops will also come with the reduced warranty. So the final category is the alternative laptop category and Apple computers fall within this category. And generally speaking, buying Apple laptop for architectural work maybe is not the greatest idea because it doesn't run 3ds Max and Revit, both of which are very popular architectural programs. However, it does run many other programs such as ArchiCAD, Vectorworks, AutoCAD, Photoshop, basically everything else apart from some of the Autodesk applications. Now, Apple also have a great reputation for for their customer service and they have exceptional build quality as, as well as the aesthetical appearance of these laptops are completely next level compared to the PCs in my opinion. However, Macintosh computers are a really expensive line of laptops. They tend to have their base models at quite affordable and reasonable price. But if you go with the specs that are required for the architectural work, the price goes up significantly. And I think for most people who buy these types of laptops, it's more of an emotional type of decision rather than rational because I think part of us wants to be part of this creative um, community with all of which use Macintosh computers and you know it's seen as this cool slick product that just kind of stands out from everything else that is available and I think another way to justify the price of these computers is that at the higher end they actually perform the same way as the workstation class laptop so in terms of durability reliability and also the longevity of these computers and the ability to run several programs at the same time is comparable to the workstation class laptops. So my top pick for this category is the 16 inch MacBook Pro laptop with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and the i7 processor. In fact, I have one of these computers myself. I'm quite happy with it, but I understand that that might not be everybody's cup of tea specifically because of their price and because they cannot run some of these really important programs that architects use every day. Have a look at this other video that I made that goes through the exact laptop specifications and what they mean so that you can have better understanding of the technical terminology and what each of the components inside of your computer does. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.